free throw shooting is going to be one of the bigger stories of, of this game. Just, just I mean, you guys haven't been a horrible free throw, free throw shooting team this year. What do you think just happened there down the stretch? I missed free throws, especially when it counted. You know, one possession game down the stretch, and you know, it's just they rely on your reps and your routine, and um, you know, just staying focused. And unfortunately, you know, we just didn't. Make them when they really, really count. Go ahead, Stan. You guys, you know, started the game hot, and then uh, Cam comes out. I think it was 13 minutes or so. He picks up his second foul. Just how frustrating was that? And how much do you feel like that kind of changed the momentum you guys had there in the first half? Yeah, I mean, you can't go back and replace. You really don't know, but um, he seems to be doing that quite often this year. I talked to him about it a lot, and how valuable he is for our team. And you know, it's not because he's not trying to you know, play well and, and do right and help us win. It's, it's just his aggression sometimes he needs to be a little more disciplined and not put himself in harm's way and you know, try, to, try to think and play defensively or even offensively for that matter because we're, we're better when he's on the floor. Well, Paul, front row. Now, obviously, you've seen Sears for a couple of years now. Just how, how difficult is he to keep in front of you, first of all, and, and then just the way he's able to shoot the basketball? Yeah, he's a great player. Um, I, mean, I think he's as good of, as a guard as there is um, in college basketball right now. He's just got no weaknesses in his game. He's got experience. He obviously shoots it at a high clip. You know, he's 50 from three, and you know, I don't know what he is from the field, but it's right around there as well. I think in the 80s from the free throw line. And he's a competitor. And, you know, you talk about you know keeping him away from his left but we've all seen enough basketball where we complain that let him go to his dominant hand and but, but there's certain players that can get there regardless you know you certainly talk to your blue in the face about trying to do that with guys but he's one of those guys that has figured out a way to to get where he wants to go but um, you know he certainly had a heck of a second half and uh, kind of willed, willed their team We'll stay to coaches right on the front row. We'll go to Tanner, and then we'll go back to Benjamin. Coach, kind of an out of characteristic night for Tolu tonight, five for 15 from the floor. What do you need to see out of the rest of the guys when he can't get going? Yeah, I mean, he's, you know, he's probably as more disappointed or as much disappointed as, as anybody is. And, um, you know, that was the plan, right, to, to play inside out um, and to get him the ball and get Jimmy the ball. and you know, try to, you know, just impose his will on, on their team and, and get his game going down there. And for whatever reason, uh, the ball wouldn't go in the basket for him. And uh, the majority of his shots were, you know, around the charge circle other than the one jumper he took. And, um, you know, I, I don't know. I think it's just one of those nights for him. Uh, the turnovers, the numbers overall were about even, but a uh, big discrepancy in terms of points off turnovers in their favor. You know, how, how tough can that be when you're playing against a team that likes to get out in transition and wants to play really fast, you know, to defend after you turn the ball over? Yeah, that was a big topic of conversation is their um, transition offense. And, you know, the biggest strength that we could have was not to turn the ball over, you know, to try to not let them get in transition because they're really hard to guard when, when you give, it, give them the ball and, and the court's broken and they can get their run game. Um, that way, and the same thing with you know taking average shots early at the clock. I thought we did a little bit of that as well, and we had really talked a lot about that. Uh, not trying to jumpstart you know their transition game by putting ourselves in harm way, harm's way that way. And uh, but they're they're good at what they do. I mean they they got their system. They believe in it. They're committed to it. Um, you know they're just they know that it's a game of spurts, and they're trying to you know get longer spurts um, than the other team, and they do it. You know, by sharing the basketball and spacing the floor and getting a bunch of threes, and uh, you know, still a lot of confidence with their kids to shoot the ball. We'll go back to the cameras and John, and then we'll head back down to the front row with Justin. Chris, uh, how confident are you in your guys' kind of mentality and ability to kind of wipe away a loss like this, get back at it in the gym tomorrow with you know that right mentality to kind of attack the gauntlet of SEC play that you guys have coming up? Yeah, I'm not worried about that. Got a core group of guys that understand that this league is unrelenting, it's unforgiving. Every game, you know, is uh, there's a lot riding on it. Um, 
you know that that's you know not my concern. I know we'll we'll get back once we you know regroup and get through this feeling, and that's just the way it works, you know, in, in every every conference, but especially in a conference like this. Chris, there there aren't many other teams in college basketball that are as high octane offensively as they are. What do you think the guys learned about just just how precise and how I guess crisp you have to be on the defensive end against against a team like that? Yeah, I don't know. I'll talk to them, you know, when we watch the film and we'll go through all, all the, of our breakdowns. You know, the biggest issue we had was, you know, especially in the second half, even in the first half, is we were trying to um, play their, their their ghost screens, if you will, where they slip out of the ball screens with guard and guard and, or guard and big, and, and we just we, we couldn't get it on the floor. We were guarding our own man, so we had two on the ball, and we got better at it in, late in the game, but, um, you know, a lot of the their scores were of that variety, and that was frustrating. And we had to eventually try to change it. But um, they're, they're a hard guard, you know. We knew that going in. Um, you know, we certainly try to do our best to put our players in position to give them the best chance. But at the end of the day, it's my only message I have for the guys that they play better.